at the cosmic play as a whole. The play is made by the vibration. And if one looks at the whole play as a whole, without getting attached to any small or big portion in it, with the thought of I, my, or mine, he enjoys the life of blissful existence. Anyone who makes slightest difference gets attached to some smaller big portion, that he meets the same fate as the weak sense-bound creature. And this law is uniform and universal. It is, there is no excuse depending on who you are or what you are doing. Anybody who breaks this law is punished. Or anybody who obeys it without knowing it also gets the benefit. Or if anybody says that I am innocent, I was not knowing this law, that's why I broke it, he is not excused by the law. So this is a universal law and there is no exception to this law. And because of this law that you have got ability to unfold the self which is lying within you to the real self which you are. You are separated from your real self only by your own thoughts. Nothing is coming in between you and your thoughts. And that's why they say that it is once we realize this fact, then you become the master of your life. It is you who have to decide whether I want transition episodes of happiness and unhappiness or whether I want a steady state. The choice is yours. You being the person who is embodiment of abilities you know. You are as powerful as any embodiment of abilities to know, whether it's a cosmic ability or whether it is anywhere, every microcosm has got this ability. And that's why you find that the visionaries, Nostradamus, has claimed that 21st century is probably the century of revival of Aryan culture. The Aryan culture means the culture of civilized men and women, where everybody will be using the best of his skills and abilities to help everyone. Or the paleoanthropologist, the Tillard de Cardin, the French anthropologist, he has said that the cosmic evolution which has passed through the stages of Barysphere, then the lithosphere, then the hydrosphere, then the atmosphere, come to biosphere, then to the psychosphere, is now on the verge of entering new sphere. And he has explained that new sphere as the sphere whose outer manifestation is the phenomenal universe and inner manifestation is the impersonal self. And Sherrington is also telling us the same thing that though our thoughts coincide in time and place with pattern of activity in the brain, we are aloof from it. These are only providing material for us. And it is our own choice how to program that computer. And the human body is computer, but you are not the computer. But you have to see that you want to program it, how to program it. The technique is given by the Vedic philosophy that it is not, as it is claimed that the metaphysics is without any practical method to do it. If you want to go to the sun, you have to follow the technique which is given. So similarly here, if you follow this technique, they say that any conscious human being, irrespective of time and place, will reach the stage 
of evolution and rather to enjoy the life of blissful existence or to experience elations and depressions. The choice is ours. That's why we say that even the gods want to come to human level because that is the choice is there. What you want to enjoy now? You want to enjoy these all things? Why? There is nothing wrong in it. That they don't tell you that the money is bad or power is bad or anything. They only tell it that you don't use that money, you don't use that power or position for boosting your ego. You use it for helping others and you are free. So this is the simple technique which Vedic philosophy is telling and which matches with Sherrington's view that we are aloof from the body. And it is our knowledge about how the human body works. That's why you find every religion or every prophet of every religion tells you the final state that you do good to others, you be good, you do benevolent, and all these things every religion tells you. It is because that is the way to go to this state. And that's why in every religion practically you find that this knowledge is to be given to the students, not at the old age, <laughs> but it is to be given at the time before he is introduced to this big storehouse of knowledge which is stored in the surrounding in the form of human body. So before the training begins, there is the thread ceremony. That you give this thread of knowledge that Om Bhur was from. That I worship that sun which is going to show me what is the earth, heaven and other sun. So that sun I am worshipping and not this sun which is in the sky which is showing me. Or the same thing is that in Christianity when they do baptism or the Muslims when they do the Sultan. All these procedures are just before the student is introduced to the scripture or to the knowledge of all the fields. And that's why you find that we say that primary education is for training the student. That is, we are training them for how to use these alphabets. What are the alphabets available? Secondary education is to tell, take them around the whole museum to show them that in this language there are so many branches available which one will like you. And then after he moves and he goes to the postgraduate level, he knows that this is the field which I want to concentrate. And then they say that this is university education which makes you universal personality. The only thing is, you should not use that for your ego boosting, but for helping others. So that is what the physiology, and I thought that Sherrington's view is more appropriate than the Paula view. But I could not tell most of you about it, because it would have confused you more than it might have confused you today. <laughs> so it is about what I wanted to tell. I thank you for giving me this opportunity to meet you all.